Hello, welcome to Go on a Run. And in this video, I want to talk about Go module. Now, if you've been following along all as well, the last video was on how to install MongoDB. And I promised that the next video would be how we use MongoDB from Go. Well, why the change? Well, it's because I've been using Go modules and I think it is absolutely fantastic. And I think it's going to help all of us if we sort of switch to Go. Well, forget sort of, if we switch to Go module, okay? I'm not gonna pull any strings. Let's just say it. I would really like you to switch to Go modules. And so this video, I will show you why. So here I am in my Go Run um, directory and I've written a simple program. So let me start it up and I'll show you what I mean. I figure I just illustrate for you why I think that Go Lang, Go module is so good. So the new, the program I've written first to, um, to illustrate Go module is this one called log test. Okay. And just brought up a very simple program so we can save some time. I simply have a main application and uh, I'm going to write some log messages, two log lines using the print line function. And then the last one is to say fatal, log fatal, and it should cause my program to exit. I'm using the standard Go package. Uh, let me run the code and let's see. All right, so going to our log test directory, um, same exact code, I haven't changed it. And so let's do go run and main and blah. So this is exactly what we expect. It gives us the time when it's run and date and it prints out the message. Now, if you come from a Java environment of writing log messages, you sort of expect to see things that you log messages that are info versus debug versus trace versus what's warning. And then of course, if you have a fatal one, well, sure, the program would um, might be telling you that it's gonna exit, but you saw, sort of want that indication from the log message itself. Like here, we have no indication that this is, whether this is informational only, or it's a warning or for trace debugging. So for example, if I want that sort of thing, I'll have to include it myself. I'll have to say something like, you know, info, something like that. And this is a warning, for example right? Something like that. And then now if I rerun my program, then I get that output. So why should I do this? Why don't I just invoke, you know, log that info, for example, and have it prepend that string for me. And if it's a warning, I should be able to say log that warn, right? That is ideally what I would like. And, but this standard log package does not have that. It does not have any of those functions. But there is a log package that has that. And that log package is from, it's called logros. And let me put that in place instead. And so you've noticed that I've been using logros instead of the standard log package. But because I still want to use the, um, you know, reference here for the package name log, well, I just overwrite it because otherwise I'd have to go through and write log rust, log rust, because that would be imported as log rust. So I instead import it with an alias called log. And then once that's saved, all the warning goes away. And so now if I rerun the same program, I'll leave it here so you can compare the result. You can see now this is much more clear to me immediately. What is an info message? What's a warning? And then here's my fatal message with, you know, highlighted in um, red. So I really, really like the output of Logros and there are many other features to it that I don't even worry using because this alone is just really nice for me. Okay, so what does this have to go with Go module? Well, someone um, pointed out that when they tried to build my application and run it, it failed. And the reason that it failed is because in order to use Logros, you have to get it first. You have to do go get and then say that, well, you want to use Log Logros. Now, because I have it, my application works. So let me show you what happens if I remove this and in the land of Go module, how things change. So we know that though, when I do go get, it gets the source and it puts it in my Go 
path directory. So what is my go path? Well, let's just see. So env and let's say go path. Let's ask for what my go path is. Oh, and that's it. So let's remove the right minus rf. And I will access my own directory. So go slash source and GitHub and it's serial pen. And so let's remove that. Okay. Now, if I rerun my program, it's still going to work because it's also in my package directory being compiled and placed in my package directory, right? So Darwin, I'm on uh, Mac. And so GitHub and serial pen and it's there. Okay, so I can have that removed also. So let's remove that. All right, so now if I try to rerun my program, it should fail. So let's see. So let me clear my screen a bit of it and go run main. And of course, it says I do not have this. So this is exactly what you would get if you didn't previously um, install this package. And so that's not nice because now when I right example and I use MongoDB package. Now you have to go get that. Wouldn't it be nice if with the code, I had some way of saying what the dependencies are for this application? So essentially we want dependency management. And so that is fairly easy. So the first thing you have to do is install go version 1.11. All right. So that's the first thing you have to do in order to get the nice stuff that's going to show you. So if you do that, go mod and you type in it it should create a module file for you but here is failing to create that module for me because there's this environmental variable that is set to auto once once you install go um, version 1.11 and what auto means is that if i'm in a go path do not use go module but if i'm outside of my go path which i'm not because I'm inside of the Go directory source and blah, blah, blah. So I'm in this Go path, which I showed you before what my Go path is. Well, so now it wouldn't use it because this variable is set to auto. If I want to force the use of Go module while I'm still in my Go path, well, I'll have to set this to on. So there's another way I can do this. I can go to a directory outside of my Go path. So let's go to uh here for example and let's copy um actually let me cd back there and go up one directory and then i do cp minus r and let's call log test and call put it in my home directory so i'll go to my home directory and i'll go into log test now remember i still only have my main that go program so let me clear up my screen a little bit and so i want to use go module if i say go mod in it well it's saying it can determine the path i want to use like the module path the module path is sort of like the git repository that you intend to use and if you already had a git repository um set up it would just simply use that so i'll just give it something and i'll call it this is you know github.com um, forward slash vero diversity for example and go on the run, for example, and maybe I can I call it log test if I want, but Go module is so flexible that really you can have multiple things. But in this example, I call it log, um, log that test. And so now it created a Go that module file for me. It did not create anything else, right? I had my main that go, it created this go module file. So what is in this go module file? So let's take a look. So if I do go mod, you'll see that all it says, it says module, and then it has the GitHub path that I type. Still doesn't say anything about the dependencies that my main that go program, which is still here, needs, which is, you know, log rust. So if I do now go run, and I type main that go, Again, I haven't changed anything other than type initialize a go.module file. And by doing that, now notice all my program runs successfully. I did not have to install anything. I did not say go get. And what happened? Well, a lot of things. Actually, if we just do a cat on that go.module file again, we'll see that now it says that oh, 
looked at the file, made that go, saw that I didn't have it, added to this file. And so now if I check in this code with the go.mod file and the main.go, you're, if you're using go version 1.11, you simply say go run and guess what? Your program will run and you don't have to worry about downloading anything. So that's really cool. But then you're probably thinking, well, very well for this to work, I had to go outside and maybe I have my whole directory, my um, source package and all that sort of stuff set up already. And I don't want to start developing somewhere else. So let me get rid of this then and go back to, okay. And so I'm back to my go run project directory. And so there's my log test. So let's go into it. And I still have the same application that I had before. And I still do not have a go.module file here. If I try to type go module in it again, go module and in it, it will tell me that I am inside a directory that has go path set, so it's disabled. So what I can do is do an export go module equals on to force it on. So instead of having the auto, auto means that if I'm inside go path, then turn off go module. If I'm outside of go path, then use go module. Now I'm saying I want go module on and I really don't care if you're in go path, I still want you to use it. And so here I will say go in it, go mod in it. Now I'm taking off the GitHub and all that stuff because this project is already on the GitHub. So it automatically uses the same path that I would have typed. That's because this project is already on the a version control, right? So now when I type go run main, it of course will work. Now you might say, well, it downloaded and cache it before. Yes, it did. So let's remove all of that. So minus RM, and remember I had my package directory, PKG. So let's remove that. Oh, it's telling me that all things are, I don't have permission to remove certain things. And that's because some of these files that were downloaded by the package were placed in there as read only. So let's change mod permission on those things. CH mod. And I'll change the permission to give myself read permission. And then now I'll go remove it. And so now I can remove it. Okay, so it's gone. And now we should expect that my go run command should again work. And notice because everything was removed, when I say go run and I had this file, the module file, it went, it found all the dependencies, downloaded it. And if we look again, it created that module file, which we can see here. And uh, there it is. And it put the same requirements in. Now you might see another file, which is this go sum file. And basically what it's doing is just um, keeping a checksum of all the module it downloaded. So that the next time it needs to download something, it's gonna check and see, well, do I have that already? And if I do, then I don't need to download it. But you don't have to worry about managing the go sum file or even putting it under version control because it will just create it. The only thing you really need is the go module and of course your source. Now, things that even, I tell you, Go module is really, really cool. So I'll do yet one other thing before I end this. So as you can see here, I have Go, um, a Go mod file and a Go sum. So I'll remove both of them. Okay, still just have my main program. I'll go up one directory. So this is represent the root of all my projects. This is what I've been version con um, putting in version control. And we notice because this is where my Git um, project is, right? And I can prove that by saying cat.git.config. And then you can see this um, points to the remote repository for you know this GitLab repo. And so here is where I'll run my go mod in it. And so now, because I run it from this directory, notice the name that it used instead. It did not use the log run, which is the subdirectory I was in. Well, even though I put go mod in the parent directory, I can still go back to my log test directory and I have a dependency in this directory. Remember, I still have a dependency on log ros. 
and let's just make sure that we don't have anything stored from before so i want to change mod let's remove all remove all of that rm minus rf so let's remove everything so we know that we don't have anything we don't have any log rust anywhere oh we should also remove from the source directory so source uh github it doesn't look like i have anything for log rust in this directory so i don't want to remove the source directory because i would remove all of my code so all right so let me show you this one last thing so i still have my application here that uses um module that uses log rust and then within the parent directory is where i say my module root is but still from within this directory i can still say go run main at go and notice how it still works that's because wherever i run my code from now on once i'm using module it will keep going it will check in that directory first for a go that module file if it doesn't find one it goes up to the parent. If it finds one there, then it uses it. If it doesn't, it keep going up and so on. Which really, what, what this means is that modules are super flexible because if I created a directory and let's call it A, B, C. And so now I have, you know, something that looked like this. If I go down to the C directory and I have some code and I, if I would like, I can put another go that mod file there to manage which modules and versions of different packages should be used from C down, right? And so anything that get compiled below C directory would use the go that module file there. So for example, let's just touch one. Uh, touch A B C. Let's see, um, let's put it at, at level B. So go that mod. So if I did this, what I'm saying is that since go.mod is inside of the B directory, anything that gets compiled in B or any child of B will use the rules specified in this go, um, that mod, in this module. Okay. I haven't put anything in there yet, but you imagine that I had, you know, of course I went into this directory and had a module name and so on. So let's see, A, B. And let me just remove the go that module and have it created automatically for me by saying go mod in it. And that should create a module for me. And as you can see, it created it with the name log test forward slash AB. So from, from now on, any code I, code I read right below this directory or its subdirectory will be governed by this go that module file. So you could have module within module. And that's why I think this is so great because it makes it super easy now for the author of piece of code to just provide the code and know that how it can be built correctly by somebody else who includes it. So that's why I think you should immediately, if you haven't already, install go 1.11 and then start using modules. All right. So in terms of the, um, reading material, there's some stuff out there that you can read. And the easiest way to get to it is to go to the GoLang web page, go to download go and of course you can download the version of go.11 for your operating system and after you've done that but if you want to read more on it then you should go to release history and then um, click here and then release notes so go 1.11 release notes and then it tells you all about some the packages here and this is basically how the, the go module works and you can, there's a whole lot more to it. Okay. Um, another thing that you might want um, to do is to go check out this documentation on new concepts. Um, and, um, well, actually it's not there. It's Russ Cox wrote a blog post and where is it? Um, so here it is, this website. And this sort of give you the nice background on why we need go modules and all the features and so on of it. So I would work with, you know, versions and semantic versioning and there's so much more to this that really i cannot cover it all and i'm still learning myself but definitely go check this out um so i think that's it so take care see you in the next video thanks for your time